So something pretty big just happened in the world of AI and robotics, something that could actually change how we interact with machines in the next few years. Could AI really outperform top researchers and lead scientific discovery? Futurehouse just dropped four powerful, free AI agents, Crow, Falcon, Owl, and Phoenix, that are doing exactly that. Backed by Eric Schmidt, these aren't your typical chatbots. They're specialized for science and already making breakthroughs, cutting down the work from weeks to mere minutes. This isn't beta, it's public, and it's here to stay. Let's explore how these AIs are revolutionizing the lab. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Meet the AI Dream Team. Futurehouse emphasizes that these agents are built from the ground up specifically for science, not chit chat. Crow is your quick draw generalist. Need a technician question answered fast? Ask Crow. It sifts through open access papers and delivers a concise, citation studied answer. Falcon goes much deeper. It can digest dozens, even hundreds, of full text articles, pulling from proprietary databases like Open Targets. Falcon then weaves all of that information into comprehensive, long form reviews. Owl, which was previously known as Has Anyone, acts as a scientific detective. It checks if a crazy experiment you're considering has already been done, saving you potentially six months of wasted lab time. And finally, there's Phoenix. Still labeled experimental, Phoenix is the chemistry brainchild. It can propose fresh compounds, predict reactions, and even do a cost analysis to see if it's cheaper to buy or synthesize a molecule. The real game changer? These four agents can be chained together. Futurehouse says this allows a single researcher to manage workloads that used to require entire teams. Imagine the possibilities. Trust and transparency, learning from past mistakes. Now, it's important to remember that this isn't happening in a vacuum. Google's own AI for Science announcement back in February certainly lit a fire under the scientific community. And we all remember Google's 2023 genome system, which famously boasted about 40 supposedly new materials, only for a later analysis to show none were truly novel. That flop still casts a shadow, highlighting how hallucinations and shaky reasoning can completely torpedo even the flashiest AI demos. Futurehouse is acutely aware of this, and they're actively trying to avoid that trap. In every blog post, they emphasize transparent reasoning and multi-stage evidence gathering. You can literally click through each step of an agent's process. You can watch it pick search terms, see how it ranks journalists by citation graphs, and understand why, say, Nature Genetics made the cut while a random BioRxiv preprint didn't. In one demo, Falcon pulled 32 papers, decided 24 were truly relevant, and then distilled 62 separate chunks of evidence into a final answer. And you, the user, could inspect every single breadcrumb. This level of visibility is crucial because, let's be real, scientists are a skeptical bunch. Even the leadership at Future House admits that today's large language models often struggle with high precision tasks. They can't even reliably count nitrogens into a molecule. That's why Phoenix, the chemistry agent, relies on external chemistry tools, patent databases, and reaction simulators. Think of it as a specialized calculator stapled onto an LLM brain. To further close the loop, the team runs its own wet lab in San Francisco. This allows them to generate a hypothesis, synthesize compounds, test them, feed that real-world data back into the model, and then tweak it. It's a continuous cycle of improvement. A real-world example, tackling PCOS. To prove these agents aren't just vaporware, Futurehouse shared a fascinating demo into polycystic ovary syndrome, or PCOS. Michaela Hinks, who leads the science team, came into this cold with no prior PCOS background, just her genetics expertise. Her first step? She fired up Falcon and asked for a comprehensive breakdown of PCOS. Definitions, synonyms, diagnostic criteria, underlying causes, the whole deal. The agent quickly ran a torrent of queries, hoovered up full-text studies and clinical trial records, filtered duplicates, and produced a thorough overview in minutes. The transparent trace showed not just titles and DOIs, but also quality scores linked to citation networks. Then Michaela got surgical. She switched to Crow and asked which genes consistently appeared in BCOS genome-wide association studies. Crow rapidly listed big hitters, including the now famous DNND1A, linking each to multiple GWAS papers. But listing genes is just table stakes, right? So she pinged OWL. Has anyone used CRISPR screens to connect these GWAS hits to hyperandrogenism? OWL confirmed that Yes, one group had indeed shown overexpression of DNND1A, boosting testosterone in vitro. However, OWL also revealed that nobody had nailed the exact mechanism. Boom! A crucial research gap identified in just four short prompts, instead of days or weeks of library crawling. Still curious? Michaela then asked, Do we know why increased DNND1A jacks up androgen levels? The agents came up empty, and that 
Future House argues, is the moment a wet lab experiment becomes truly justified. Most of us burn days or weeks just to reach that point. This is where Phoenix steps in. Given the open question, Michaela asks Phoenix to propose three novel, potentially drug-like compounds that might tamp down DNND1A driven hyperandrogenism. Since no FDA approved binders exist for that specific protein, Phoenix first mapped its protein interaction partners. Then, it fetched molecules that hit those partners, meticulously checking each candidate's patient status, solubility, functional groups, and even synthetic routes, discarding anything derivative. By the end, it produced a detailed dossier for each molecule, explaining why it might modulate DNND1A, and how much it would cost to procure, and even if it needed to be tweaked into a pro-drug later on. Futurehouse emphasizes that tasks like patient searching or ADMET prediction rely on these specialized tools because, let's be honest, pure LLMs are comically bad at chemistry arithmetic. The metrics in the future. Futurehouse has put their agents to the test, running benchmarks on literature, QA precision, and accuracy head-to-head -head against cutting-edge search models like XAI and even human PhD literature sleuths. Their agents top the charts in both retrieval precision and accuracy. While they haven't published raw percentages, the claim is, frankly, superhuman. To be fair, they do concede that Phoenix is less battle-tested and might make mistakes, which is why it's out there gathering public feedback. Rapid iteration is their strategy. Nobody is pretending perfection. And this honestly matters, especially for the genome disappointment and the broader worry that AI hallucinations could slip unvetted claims into real experiments. Scale is another critical aspect. PubMed alone holds 38 million papers. Clinicaltrials.gov tracks over 500,000 trials. Scientists globally juggle thousands of siloed tools. Futurehouse argues that individual labs simply don't have the engineering muscle to scrape, store, or rate limit that much data. So, the nonprofit aims to be the infrastructure layer. Imagine API calls that allow your screening pipeline to auto kick off literature reviews or contradiction hunts every night at 2 a.m. The best part? Everything is free, publicly available, and open to feedback. The source code for key components is even opened under permissive of licenses. With board members like scientist entrepreneur Adam Marblestone and Eric Schmidt's backing, the lights are kept on without the typical VC pressure to monetize everything immediately. Of course, skepticism persists. A TechCrunch write-up noted that Future House hasn't yet produced an entirely novel discovery. No new alloy or first in-class drug, despite these fancy agents. But Future House counters that even Google's genome, with all of its fanfare, couldn't deliver genuinely new materials. They suggest the bottleneck is partially experimental logistics, not just algorithm smarts, which is precisely why they run a physical lab to cross that last mile. Still, until a peer-reviewed breakthrough emerges, the broader scientific community will remain cautiously optimistic.